I had a, a revelation from God that I needed to give up my job, give one month's notice on my job, one month's notice on my apartment, and uh, that I should sell my motor car. At the time I got that <coughs> revelation, it was like, holy smack. I, I've been traveling so much, I need my motor car. Of course, I sold it anyway, because that's what God wanted me to do. So I sold my motor car, and I had it in my diary, like, what's going to happen in the next month? I don't know, because one of the funny things about giving your notices, when you give your notice in, they all say, what are you going to do? And my answer was, I don't know. <laughs> so <coughs> that creates problems. Anyway, <clears throat> well, I'm not married, so I'm okay doing what I'm doing. And uh, <clears throat> I get to the 27th day, roughly, 26th, 27th day, and still nothing has happened. So, you know, I still don't know where I'm going, you know. So I get a telephone call from a, a man called Peter Caddy, right? And Peter Caddy is the main theme of this uh, Fintorn thing. And I never heard of him before, but he rang me up and he said he had got my name and number from my friends. And, and I don't know actually how he, in the heck he got my name and number, but he did. So I said to him, uh, he got on the phone to me and he said, I'm coming by Harlan, Yorkshire. I'm in London at the moment, but I'm going to drive back the next day to Scotland. And he said, <clears throat> if you'll come with me, I will pick you up and we will go together to Scotland. So, you know, this to me was like ding dong bells were going off in my head. This is it. This is where I've got to go, right? So <laughs> I say, all right you know, you can call on me, and I gave him my address, and he told me when likely he was coming, you know, like 3.30 in the afternoon or some funny thing. Anyway, he came the next day. <coughs> I loaded up my stuff into the back of his vehicle, and off we went. And my first introduction was, this guy was like a Formula One racing driver, but with a twist. He could see round the corners when nobody else could. And <clears throat> he said to me, you know, I would say, how, in the, how you know, you can't see round those corners. He said, yes, I can. He, I said, how? He said, I got an angel <laughs> in front of the car. That's what he said. And I was like dumbstruck. I, I can't argue about that because I can't see angels, right? So I'm not going to argue about something I don't know anything about. And I'm not going to. This guy seems to know what he's doing. So sure enough, we drove up to Scotland, the most hair-raising drive I'd had in my life. And uh, <clears throat> this guy, Peter Caddy, was a very interesting man. He'd been a squadron leader in the Air Force, and he was now running, started this group. Could have called it the Institute of Advanced Living if he wanted to, but it was about living with God and living in a new way. <clears throat> so we chatted along the way, and that's great with me. And at the time of my life, I was wanting a new start. I just had a, uh, a completely blowout in the academic world with uh, in the university I was at. And the, the uh, academics there were a, just a disgrace. I mean, I want to put that on a thing, but they were. So <clears throat> I was ready to do anything but study academically. And uh, <clears throat> I got to Finhorn, and right away, Peter Caddy was in a hurry. He was, this man is usually in a hurry, and he wanted some foundations dug. He wanted some ground prepared for growing things. So I was just there. I was going to do all this stuff, whatever he wanted. I was work ready to work. And the last thing I wanted to do was think about academic garbage. And I was very happy to do that. So that's what I did for the first year. I dug ground, dug 
foundations. Peter Caddy planted a lot of things. And this place here that you see now, I mean, it was just nothing. It was just sand dunes with a few uh, yew trees and a yew, you know, uh, wild yew things growing. But there was nothing like it is now today. It's to me, it's a, like a revelation to be here today because it's all been built up. I mean, this is an in, amazing place. Now, Peter Caddy was a highly spirited person whose wife got regular revelations from God. And the first thing they used to do mostly, not always, but was to write them down and publish them like amongst the little community. We all could read what Eileen had received like yesterday or in the morning. So we had this flow of advice from heaven and we went about our business understanding that we're doing something like for the glory of God. We're doing it because we need to live in a better way and uh, let's get on with it. So we got on with it. Now Peter Caddy lived in a caravan with his wife and I think it was three young boys. There might have been another one, but anyway, it was at least three children. And, uh, you know, his plan was to follow whatever God said and we were going to do what God wanted us to do. And that was it. And I was completely happy about that sort of thing. I, I mean, I don't, want to, I don't want to live in a miserable world all this time. I want to live in the kingdom of heaven on earth. <laughs> so, and uh, I was happy working with him. He was a very interesting man and a very enlightened man. Eileen was Peter's wife and Dorothy was a longtime friend and they were both intelligent ladies. They were both devout and they were both very clear that they went along with this interesting development. When it was, when I'm talking about now is, it's like it was really not developed. It was an idea that existed and we had to work hard to bring it into existence. For example, my job in the very beginning was I had to try and make seven foundations for these caravan type things that they pushed together were due to come and, and provide accommodation for people visiting. They had very clear, they didn't know what was going to go on, but they knew God was going to bring forth whatever God wanted. And that was it. I think it's the simple fact is their vision which of course was godly, has come to pass. I mean, you've got mature trees, you've got, I don't know, at least a hundred homes here. It's all happened. And uh, it's, it's, it's like a miracle, really. Dorothy was a very well-educated Canadian, and she was originally uh, involved with the uh, intelligence services and she was a devout person and serious-minded person and with Eileen was the highly spirited person who got revelations every day and the other lady was more like a, a business lady you know can do order and system and keep things together. And Eileen was the one who got the revelations from God. And Peter was the guy who made everybody keep going and working on the whole thing. <laughs> yeah. And tell us about the gardens. Well, at the beginning there wasn't one. It was just, we were just in the middle of sand dunes. So I remember helping straighten out some ground at one stage and we, you know, got it level. We planted even potatoes. We put all kinds of stuff in the ground to try and help them grow, you know, like manure and stuff. We had a big compost heap. But 
you know, we got very little in the first, the first crop of potatoes was like just little tiny ball bearings because <laughs> the water went straight through. And it didn't stop Peter from knowing, you know, we can do better. We have to get this land so that it's, it's uh, productive, right? This is junk land. This is not, you know, High Street on, on uh, you know, Fifth Avenue or anything. This is like, we're in the backwoods here and the land is just, the sea just washed over for it and it's all sand. But we turned it into high quality ground because we put lots of compost in it, we put seaweed on it, and we and we built up something that, as you can see, everything grows like crazy. And and uh, it, 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 to me it was like watching this thing grow, and I didn't stay here forever, I just stayed for a while, but it, it worked very beautifully. A normal day was we got up, we had some sort of prayer, we had breakfast, and then we started work. And, you know, maybe, I, I don't know exactly, maybe I worked from nine o'clock to, you know, five o'clock or whatever it was. But we weren't working for money or we weren't working just to get something done. We had a vision and we wanted to complete the vision so that God could have what he wanted. And Peter was the central point and he told us what to do, when to do it. Well, this is just, look, this is like watching a dream come true, only it's not a dream. This is monumental stuff. If you really look at it closely, this is an experiment in advanced living, not just materially, but with the Spirit of God. You can't look around this place and see all the stuff that's here without recognizing, my God, how did they get all this stuff together? It was not just because somebody had the gift of the gab or somebody said, let's start a new religion. None of that. It's If you look at the material they have, the, what God has said, how they built this and built that, and people did this and people did that. People from all over the world have come here. They've done the right thing for... I think 52 years, John Willener told me that I was here 52 years ago. <laughs> so I have to say, they've been doing the right thing for 50 years. They've been developing whatever it is they're trying to develop. And God guides them. And that's what they've got to do. They've just got to keep following what God wants.